Today, we will learn about hundreds and thousands. Rahul saw a fruit seller selling fruits. After seeing the fresh apples he was selling, Rahul was tempted to buy. He asked the seller about the price of the apples. The fruit seller said it was 55 rupees per kg. If Rahul buys half a kg of apples, then how much money would he have to pay the fruit seller? Think for a while. You got it right. Since Rahul is buying half a kg of apples, he has to pay half the price for 1 kg. That is, 27 rupees and 50 paise. How do we express this in rupees? To express this in rupees, you need to know about tenths, hundreds and thousands. Let us understand this in an interesting way. This is 1 rupee. Do you know how many paisa makes 1 rupee? 1 rupee is equal to 100 paise. Let's assume 1 whole square represents 1 rupee. If we divide the square into 10 equal parts, then each part will have 1 tenths. If we divide each of the tenths part into 10 equal parts, then we will get a total of 100 equal parts. Now, we can say that one whole square is equal to 100 parts. That means 1 rupee is equal to 100 paisa. If we talk about one part, this will be the 100th part of a whole square. That means 1 paisa is a 100th part of 1 rupee. This is a fraction whose numerator is 1 and the denominator is 100. A fraction with denominator 100 can be written in decimal form. One hundredths can be written like this. We read it as 0 0.01. Here, there are two places after the decimal point. The first place to the right of decimal point is tenths and the second place to the right is hundredths. As you can see, that the tenth part of a whole number is one tenth. Similarly, a tenth part of one tenth is one hundredths. What do you understand from this? Think for a while. Let me tell you, as we move from left to right, the value of each place is one by ten times of its previous place. Let us solve the incomplete question with this understanding. The question was, how do we express 27 rupees 50 paise in rupees? Since 1 rupee is equal to 100 paise, 1 paise is equal to 1 by 100 rupee. Therefore, 50 paise is equal to rupees 0 0.50. Thus, rupees 27 and 0 0.50 rupee together become rupees 27.50. Just think, if we divide each part of 100 parts into 10 equal parts, then how many parts will there be in total? Think for a while. You got it right. One part contains 10 parts. So 100 parts contain 100 into 10, which is equal to 1000 parts. If we take one part from these 1000 parts, then that part will become 1000th part of the whole square. We will express it like this and we read it as 0 0.001. Therefore, the third place to the right of the decimal point is one thousandths. There is a number here. Can you read this? Try and read it. You might have read it correctly. We will read it as 125.378. To the left side of the decimal point is a whole number. To represent it, we will use places like units, tens, hundreds and thousands. Similarly, to the right side of the decimal point, a part of the whole is expressed. To represent it, we will use places like tens, hundreds, thousands, etc. If we move from right to left, the value of each place increases by 10 times of its previous place. So, we will keep on multiplying with 10 in this direction. Similarly, if we move from left to right, 
the value of each place decreases by one tenth from its previous value. So we will keep on dividing with ten in this direction. So what is the difference between one hundredths and one thousandths? Think for a while. Let me tell you. One thousandths is the tenth part of one hundredths. That means one thousandths is ten times smaller than one hundredths. Today we have learned about hundredths and thousandths. In the next video, we will learn about conversion of fraction into decimal and vice versa. Today we will learn conversion of fraction into decimal and conversion of decimal into fraction. Let us learn how to represent fraction in decimal form. Assume we need to express three by four in decimal form. To do so, we have to find the equivalent fraction of three by four whose denominator is ten, hundred, or thousand. We cannot make the denominator of three by four ten, but if we multiply the numerator and denominator of three by four by twenty-five, we will get the equivalent fraction of three by four, which is seventy-five by hundredths, whose denominator is hundred. Now we can write seventy-five hundredths as zero point seven five. Let us now learn about conversion from decimal form into fraction. Assume we need to express three point two five in fraction form. To do so, we will consider one whole square. To represent the numbers till hundreds, we will divide this into hundred equal parts. To represent three, we will take three squares and we will shade all the parts. And to represent twenty five hundreds, we will shade twenty five parts out of hundred parts, which is expressed as twenty five by hundred. As you can see. That this shaded part is one fourth part of the whole, so we will write one by four in place of twenty five by hundred. Therefore, three whole and one fourth parts are represented in fractional form as three and one by four. Thus, the fractional form of decimal number three point two five is three and one by four. In mathematics, to represent any decimal number in fractional form. We will separate the whole part and the part smaller than units. Then we will represent the part smaller than units in fractional form, and we will find the simplest form of this fraction. Finally, we will write the whole part along with the part smaller than this. Today we have learned conversion of fraction into decimal and conversion of decimal into fraction. In the next video. We will learn representation of decimal numbers on the number line. Today, we will learn representation of decimal numbers on the number line. Just think, can we represent numbers with hundreds and thousands placed on a number line? Think for a while. Yes, we can definitely do so. Look here, numbers from zero to ten are represented on this number line. If we zoom in on the number line, then we can divide the distance between zero and one into ten equal parts. We can represent the numbers with tens place, like zero point one, zero point two, zero point three, etc. On this. Similarly, if we again zoom in on the number line, we can divide the distance between zero and zero point one. Into ten equal parts. This way, we can divide the distance between zero and one into a total of hundred parts. With the help of this, we can represent the numbers with hundreds place, like zero point zero one, zero point zero two, zero point zero three, etc., on the number line. In the same way, we can divide the distance between zero and zero point zero one into ten equal parts. Here. Each part will be a thousandths part. That means we can represent the numbers with thousandths places, like zero point zero zero one, zero point zero zero two, zero point zero zero three, etc.
today, we have learned representation of decimal numbers on a number line. In the next video, we will see some examples related to these concepts. Today, we will see examples on hundreds and thousands. The teacher measured Akshay's height. It was 145 centimeters. The teacher asked Akshay to express it in meters. Akshay has written his answer as 1.45 meter. Did he express the height correctly? Let us express 145 centimeter in meters. We already know that 100 centimeter is equal to 1 meter. That means 1 centimeter is one part and there will be 100 parts like this in 1 meter. By looking at this, we can say that 1 centimeter is equal to 1 by 100 meters. Therefore, 145 centimeters is equal to 145 hundredths meters. If the denominator is 100, then we will leave the first two places from the right and place the decimal point. Thus, 145 centimeter is equal to 1.45 meters. Let us understand this in another way. 145 centimeter is equal to 100 centimeter plus 45 centimeter. Since 100 centimeter is equal to 1 meter, and 45 centimeters equal to 45 by 100 meters, that is 0 0.45 meter. Therefore, 145 centimeters equal to 1 meter plus 0 0.45 meter, that is 1.45 meter. This way, Akshay has expressed the height in the correct way. Next example. Ria went to the vegetable market along with her mother. She wanted to buy a watermelon. She has chosen two watermelons, one weighing 3.259 kg and the second one weighing 3.23 kg. Mom asked Rhea which watermelon is weighing more, the one with 3.259 kg or the other with 3.23 kg. What should be the correct answer to this question given by Rhea? We need to compare the weights of both watermelons. The weights of watermelons are expressed in decimal numbers. In order to compare two decimal numbers, first, we will compare the whole parts. The decimal number with greater whole number part is the greatest number. The whole part of 3.259 is 3 and the whole part of 3.23 is also 3. That means the whole part of both decimal numbers is the same. In this situation, we will compare the digits at tens place. As you can see that the digits at tens place in both numbers is 2. So, we will compare the digits in the hundreds place. Here, the digits at hundreds place in 3.259 is 5 and the digit at hundreds place in 3.23 is 3. Since 5 hundreds is greater than 3 hundreds, we can say that 3.259 is greater than 3.23. Thus, Ria's answer should be 3.259 kgs. Next example. Anurag got 29 out of 40 marks in an exam. Represent the obtained marks in fractional form and convert it into decimal form. Anurag got 29 out of 40 marks. So the fraction of the obtained marks will be 29 by 40. Let us represent this in decimal form. To do so, we need to find out the equivalent fraction of 29 by 40, whose denominator should be 10, 100 or 1000. Can you tell what will be the equivalent fraction of 29 by 40, whose denominator is numbers like 10, 100 or 1000? Think for a while. Let me tell you, we cannot make the denominator of 29 by 40 as 10 or 100 by any way. But if we multiply the numerator 29 and the denominator 40 of 29 by 40 with 25, then we can get an equivalent fraction of 29 by 40 as 725 by 1000, whose denominator is 1000. Now, 
we can write 725 by 1000 as 0 0.725. This is the decimal form of 29 by 40. Next example. Akash has written the fractional form of 1.056 as 1 and 7 by 125. Did Akash represent the decimal number in the fraction form in a correct way? There are 1 units, 0 tenths, 5 hundredths and 6 thousandths. You already know that the place value of numbers increases by 10 times moving from right to left. Therefore, we can say that 5 hundredths is equal to 50 thousandths. So, there are a total of 56 thousandths. For 56 parts out of total 1000 parts of a whole, we can write the fraction as 56 by 1000. If we divide the numerator and denominator by 8, we will get the simplest form of this fraction, which is 7 by 125. Now, 1 unit and 7 by 125 parts together can be written as 1 7 by 125. Therefore, Akash has represented the decimal number in fractional form correctly. Today, we have seen examples of hundreds and thousands. In the next video, we will clear some misconceptions and common mistakes related to hundreds and thousands. Today, we will see some misconceptions and common mistakes related to hundreds and thousands. Misconception 1. The teacher has written a number on the blackboard and asked the students to read it. Karan read it as 4.635, Gaurav read it as 4635 and Nirmal read it as 4.635. Identify who read the given number correctly. Many times, decimal numbers are read incorrectly. Here, Karan read the digits after the decimal point collectively as one number. And Gaurav simply ignored the decimal point and changed the value of the number while reading it. Therefore, option 1 and option 2 are both incorrect. The correct understanding is that the digits to the left of the decimal point are read as a whole number, but it is incorrect to read the digits on the right side of the decimal point as a whole. We only read the digits after the decimal point. Therefore, the given number is read as 4.635. Thus, Nirmal has read it correctly. Misconception 2 Samir's mother has given him one-fourth part of a cake and given 0 0.125 part of the cake to Hina. Who received the larger portion of cake in your opinion? Some students think that decimal numbers are always greater than fractions. They don't use mathematical operations for comparison and simply consider that Hina must have received a larger portion. With this understanding, Incorrect answer option 2 is chosen. In order to compare 1 fourth and 0 0.125, we need to represent both the numbers either in decimal form or in fractional form. Let's represent them in decimal form. Since 0 0.125 is already in decimal form, we will not make any changes to it. To represent 1 fourth in decimal point, we will multiply the numerator and denominator by 25. By doing so, we get the equivalent fraction of 1 fourth as 25 by 100. Its decimal form will be 0 0.25. Now, we will compare 0 0.25 and 0 0.125. Here, the whole part is equal in both numbers. So, we will compare the digits at tens place. Since 2 tenths is greater than 1 tenths, it is clear that 0 0.25 is greater than 0 0.125. Therefore, we can say that Samir has received a larger portion. So, option 1 is the correct answer. Now we will see the common mistakes related to hundreds and thousands. Some students do not know that the place value of a number keeps on decreasing 
as we move from left to right. By looking at the similar kind of names on both sides of the decimal point, students think that the value of such places is equal. For example, in 0.428, they think that there are four tens, two hundreds and eight thousands. This is a misunderstanding. The correct understanding is that there are four tenths, two hundredths and eight thousandths. Today, we have seen misconceptions and common mistakes related to hundreds and thousands. Today, we will see the role of zero in decimal numbers. Let's start with an interesting question. Nisha, Meena and Mitali were all well aware of decimal numbers. The teacher asked them to compare 1.09 and 1.9. Here, Nisha thought that both numbers are equal. Meena thought that 1.09 is greater than 1.9 and Mitali thought that 1.9 is greater than 1.09. Can you tell me who was correct? Think for a while. Let me explain this. Nisha is having a misconception that there will be no change in the value of a number whether there is zero or not. According to her, both numbers are the same. And Meena is having a misconception that there are more digits in 1.09 Hence, 1.09 is greater than 1.9. Here, Mitali's understanding is correct. Suppose we consider a large square as one unit. Then, how will we represent the decimal form if we consider one whole square and consider nine parts out of hundred parts of a whole square? Pause the video and think about it. One square means one unit. So, we will write 1 in units place. Here, another square is divided into 100 parts and 9 parts are taken from it. So, we can say that along with 1 unit, there are 9 hundredths, which is represented in decimal form as 1.09. Similarly, if one whole square is taken and another square is divided into 10 equal parts and 9 parts taken from it, then we can say that along with one unit, there are nine tenths, which is represented in decimal form as 1.9. From the representation of 1.09 and 1.9, it is clear that 1.09 is smaller than 1.9. Therefore, Mitali's understanding is correct. Zero has a greater importance in decimal numbers. If there is no digit at any place, then zero is used as a placeholder. With the help of zero, digits are written at their correct places. For example, it is correct to write one units and nine hundredths as 1.09, whereas it is incorrect to write it as 1.9. In order to know the importance of zero as a placeholder in decimal numbers, let's look at an example. Here are some numbers. Are their values equal? Pause the video and think about it. Let's find out the correct answer. Zero has a greater importance in decimal numbers. It is often used as a placeholder. That means, with the help of zero, digits are written at their correct places. For example, Numbers like 1.9, 10.9, 1.09, 1 1.009, etc. seem to be similar. But zero holds the rest of the digits at their correct places so as to ensure that their values are correct. Let's write them in the place value table. As you can see that 1.9 has 1 units and 9 tenths. 10.9 has 1 tenths, that means 10 units and 9 tenths. In this way, you can see that the place values of digits are changed with the use of zero. Similarly, in 
there is one unit and nine hundredths. 1.009 has one units and nine thousandths. Since the value of digits is different in all these numbers, so the value of numbers is also different. Now pay attention to 1.9, 1.90 and 1.900. Are their values equal? Think for a while. Let me explain this. We can represent 1.9 by taking one whole square and taking nine parts out of ten equal parts of a whole. Similarly, we can represent 1.90 by taking one whole square and taking ninety parts out of hundred equal parts of a whole. And we can represent 1.900 by taking one whole square and taking nine hundred parts out of thousand parts of a whole. As you can see, that the number of parts represented by these numbers is equal. Therefore, all of these numbers are equal. Along with this, we can also say that by adding or removing any number of zeros at the end of decimal numbers, the value of number does not change. Can we use zero at any place in the middle of the first non-zero digit and the last non-zero digit in any number? Think for a while. No, we cannot do this. If we do so, the place of digit changes and so the value of number. So make sure that we do not place zero at any place in the middle of the first and the last non-zero digit in any number. In general, if there is no digit to the left side of the decimal point, then we keep zero to the left of the decimal point. The number zero before the decimal point represents that the number is smaller than one. So either we write 0 0.1 or 0 0.1, the value of both is the same. Today, we have seen the role of zero in decimal numbers.